William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen. For the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow the third for doing promo, my friend. It is All Hallows Eve 2015, Happy Halloween 2015, and Happy Day of the Dead. They call those skulls which I, I love they call them sugar skulls Oy. in Mexico where the uh, <clears throat> where the holiday is very popular I love it I love it it's invigorating yes you see Satan or a demon before you but what I really am is a Republican I am I am the true face of the conservative right wing Republican Party and the racist redneck teabaggers. Yes, they are demons. And the American uh corporate CEO is also a demon. And I am wearing the evangelical serpent. So anyway. Let us sink our teeth back into these readings. State police in Muncie, Pennsylvania. What is there, a Muncie in every freaking state? Is there no Muncie, New York? Indiana. Muncie, Indiana, too. As long as, just like there's Springfield everywhere. Or Monroe. Or Washington. You know, but there's only one, there's only one in Main Streets, right? There's only one Coxsackie, New York. Ugh. Yeah, it's an actual town called Coxsackie. It's, it's near Woodstock. Anyway, they used shotguns on Thursday to deflate a wayward military surveillance blimp that broke loose in Maryland and floated for hours before coming down into trees in the Pennsylvania countryside. Curious residents trickled into a staging area as the military began gathering up some 6,000 feet of tether. Tether? The blimp's huge hull and a smaller tailpiece, a process expected to take at least through today. Yeah, the tether, the chain that it's hooked to, to the, to the scaffold or whatever the hell they call it, tower. The white behemoth still had helium in it. Uh-oh. When it went down. Flammable. It's a steep ravine. Isn't that flammable? Helium, no, but hydrogen, as the old days, they used to have hydrogen. Oh, the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg, yeah. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the oh, humanity. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the 
Oh boy. Sorry about that. Here. That's seven bells for the uh, disastrous second Republican debate. I love it. Seven more, actually. All right, continue. Excuse me. And the, e little... the easiest way to drain the gas was to shoot it. Shoot it? U.S. Army Captain Matthew Villa said, State police troopers peppered the blimp with about a hundred shots. Peppered blimp? Is that sounds like a, a Cajun recipe? Peppered blimp? The slow moving, unmanned Army surveillance blimp broke loose from its moorings at Aberdeen Proving Ground and then floated over Pennsylvania. Actually it sounds like uh, it sounds like Chris Christie after eating a hot and spicy uh, meal. Peppered peppered blimp. Continue. Causing thousands of the electrical outages as its dangling tether took out power lines. <laughs> the 240 foot helium filled blimp, which had two fighter jets on its tail, came down near Muncie, a small town of about 80 miles north of Harrisburg, the state capital. Uh, those towns are small out there. No injuries were reported. Very sensitive electronics on board have been removed. Uh, I wonder if Harrisburg is part of Lancaster County. The military is considering using helicopters to ferry the wreckage from the site. Wait a minute. Helium copters? Heli. Oh, helicopters. Oh, he, he, helicopters. Helicopters. Yeah, I don't want people to think there's something called a helium copter. A helicopter. He said it was unknown how the blimp broke loose, Ugh. and an investigation was underway. K. Howes Connect looked out her family room window on Wednesday and saw the blimp in the woods behind her house, flapping in the trees. What a waste, she said. Michael Nagard, spokesman for the Army Combat Readiness Center, said a two-person accident investigation team was heading to the site. He said the probe is considered Class A, a label applied to an event that might have caused at least two, two million in property damage. Involved and destroyed, missing or abandoned army aircraft or missile, or caused injury. People gawked in wonder and disbelief on Wednesday as the blimp floated silently over the sparsely populated area. Ken Hunter, an outdoors writer and wildlife illustrator, was working from home when he got a call from his wife that a blimp was coming down nearby. He drove up the road a short distance, and sure enough, there was the tail section hanging from a tree. I don't know where they think they can get away <clears throat> with a blimp yep. as a surveillance tool. Cut the crap! The enemy can shoot it down! Immediately. Uh, that's why you got you got various sized drones now. Well, there you go. That's a hell of a lot better than a goddamn blimp. Even have drones. That's probably a waste of military money. That's all. There, you, you, we money. even have drones that the civilians can buy. Of course. Of course. Uh, I, I. What about? I'm sure. Uh, 
the paparazzis of the media have drones with cameras, you know. So oh yeah, to get into the backyards of people who are having weddings that they don't want the paparazzi to see. I mean, I, I, like Billy Morrow was told me how certain actors, actresses are assholes, you know, the pup, they were yelling and cursing out they're at the paparazzi, but I mean, sometimes there's two sides to that story. Well, of course there's two sides. When they're starting out, they want to do anything to get some face time. But then later on, you know, uh, you know they want to pick and choose. Splintered House Republicans elected Paul Ryan to be the chamber's 54th speaker on Thursday. <laughs> Paul Ryan, that the guy that was that was doing a photo op uh, at washing a, dishes. Washing dishes. Yeah. He probably did that for. Like not even ten seconds for the camera. It's too hard a job, man. What's the matter with you? It's like Thanksgiving uh, time when the politician dishes out a few turkey dinners yeah. at a soup kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then leaves. Of course. Well, it's very dishonest. Oh, all politics, as Wilhelm Reich said. Is pathological. They're not doing it because they care. Oh. They care about the poor. That's great. It's a photo op. G. W. Bush did many photo ops. Oh yeah, in front of the in front of the military. Mission accomplished. Okay, that's the best. John McCain in front of veterans groups where he votes against them all the time. They, they booed him, I think. Well, they should. <laughs> Turning to the youthful but battle-tested Wisconsin lawmaker to mend the party's self-inflicted wounds and help woo voters in next year's elections. The house is broken, Ryan said. Oh, who the hell wants to mend their house? In his first remarks to the chamber, seemingly referring as much to a GOP civil war between hardliners and pragmatists as to the House's customary partisan divisions. Yeah, well, it's, it's drifted far to the right, to, to the point of, of fanaticism, to radical fanaticism. We are not solving problems, he said. We are adding to them. <laughs> and I am not interested in laying blame. We are not settling scores. We are wiping the slate clean. The New Jersey delegation voted along the party lines with six Democrats voting for Pelosi and six Republicans backing Ryan, including Representative Scott Garrett who had opposed Boehner's re-election as Speaker in January. Garrett of Wantage in Sussex County was one of the founders of the House Freedom Caucus, yeah, well, a group of 30 to 40. Uh, and, he's another, and he's another one that I'm shocked got re-elected in, in New Jersey, Scott Garrett. Along with Chris Christie, he, he, uh, double Republicans got reelected, and and you know, and and Wantage is a little one-horse town. I've been to Wantage. It's in the mountains, surrounded by lakes and trees and mountains. It's it's, it's rural. It's a little one-horse <coughs> town, and that's where people tend to be uh, uh, right wing. I know, yes, and evangelical. Yes, in 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 these rural communities. Yeah, that's correct. A group of about 30 to 40 conservatives who battled Boehner over last-minute compromises with Democrats See? and insisted the new speaker be more open to member, amen member amendments and such promises 
to voters as cutting spending and repealing the health insurance law known as Obamacare. Uh, do you see what he, what Reverend Bill just said? This is proof that bipartisanship compromise will and does not work. In a statement, Garrett said, Ryan has proven he is willing to listen to every member of his party. Yeah, a, a good soldier, a, a good lemming. And that the new speaker made a commitment to running a house that represents the will of the people. Excuse me? The will of the people? Yeah. The will? And the principles bestowed upon us by our founding document. Really? Oh, so now they care about the Constitution. Yes, they do. Yes. The will of the people. Yeah, the, the, the top... 1% or 20%, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not the will of uh, the majority of mainstream. That's correct. Liars, liars. When, when they say we the people, they mean, uh, you know, different people than the 80%. Absolutely. Yeah, and they, and they cherry pick the Constitution, don't they? Just like they cherry pick the Bible. And Representative Bill Pascrell, Jr., my congressman, by the way. Yeah, our district, Bill Pascrell. A Democrat from Patterson who battled with Ryan on the Budget Committee and the Ways and Means Committee nevertheless said Ryan was and has the respect of House members who care about the institution. You kidding me? Just as Boehner did. Bill Pascrell said that? Yeah. Well, Bill Pascrell is not, not as... He's not a progressive then. His real challenge will be corralling his own members who are off the reservation, Pascrell said. If he gives in to the minority while forsaking the majority, he will rue the day he took this job. Yeah, he'll, he'll be like just another John Boehner. Exactly. He'll be ousted. Vamoost. In a slow-moving roll call that mixed politics with pageantry, 236 Republicans called out Ryan's name as their pick for the job. That puts him next in line to the presidents after the vice presidents. Oh. Really? Oh yeah. Not Paul, the secretary. Paul Ryan. Not can, the secretary of state. You can no. challenge. You can challenge. Mr. Uh, what was his name? That uh, military guy under Reagan. When they shot Reagan, he came out and said. Colin Powell. No, 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 no. This idiot. Who I'm thinking of? I'll think of him. <laughs> he said, "Don't worry, I'm in charge. I'm in charge." No, he wasn't in charge. The vice president was in charge. Dope. Yeah, uh, 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 Herbert Walker Bush, right? Correct. Uh, just nine hard-line conservatives voted against Ryan. Instead, backing the little-known representative Daniel Webster, Republican from Florida. That was significantly fewer than the 25 who cast ballots against Boehner in January, a harbinger of the antagonism he encountered with them as the year progressed. Instead, most rebellious Republicans, including members of the House Freedom Caucus, backed Ryan. Even so, it was clear that future tensions between them and the chamber's new leader could not be dismissed. Conservatives have demanded changes in how the chamber operates, including a greater voice for rank-and-file lawmakers in shaping legislation and deciding who will chair their committees. Ryan has expressed openness to such ideas. Now Ryan has 14 months 
to prove he can be a speaker for the future, not of the past. Ryan spoke of helping the country's working people. Really? But his 15-minute speech, or 13-minute speech, was devoid of specifics. Helping the, well, of course, helping the working people to a Republican is not helping the working people because you're giving them the freedom to, uh, to, to, grow, to grow without help. Yeah, to starve. To starve. Well, they had freedom, don't they? Freedom and liberty to, to shop and to starve. Yeah. We had freedom, man. Come on. Right. So, so the so the help is not is not helping, no. and taking away their liberties, their freedom. They they do not get the idea that to uh, to do away with poverty, the poor, you make them non-poor, and you don't do that on a hundred and sixty bucks a month welfare. One hundred and forty. Or a, oh my God! In the state of New Jersey, not counting food stamps, we're not not counting SNAP, a whopping one hundred and forty dollars. There you go. What do you, what do they think? People live in a treehouse? Well, they don't think, or they wouldn't put those things into law. They do not think. No, you you must, uh, as a citizen in modern day life, you must make a living wage. Correct. And you must have opportunities, which means you must keep the job market in your country, not yeah. outsource it. You gotta wow. keep it in you, because without the job opportunities, there is no job opportunities. Uh -huh. And in order to stimulate the, uh, well, you have to have demands for the jobs. But it, well, if the demands are are going overseas, how do you? keep the demands here and the economy people have to have surplus money to spend to put back into the economy uh -huh. if people don't have surplus money uh, at great. all the, then the, they're not going to spend that is correct therefore the economy doesn't work yeah so therefore uh, corporations and stuff that uh, ship jobs overseas and uh, keep their money overseas so they don't have to bring it back here and pay taxes. These are treasonous people. They are traitors and should be treated as such. Yeah. Okay? Now, Donald Trump wants to charge them like, a, what is it? 35 percent. 35 When they bring the money back. Tariff, when they bring the product back. Or the, tar or the product. Yeah, 35 percent tariff, but so well, what about not letting them do it in the first place. Bring in the product because oh, Trump <coughs> wants to make money off it. Well, that's tax money. He ain't making the money. That's tax money, yeah, tax hopefully, hopefully not to be used on the military. Well, where do you think it's going to go? It ain't going to go to SNAP. Social programs. Hell no, man. It's a big deal. To those moochers? No, it's, it, it's more money to, f to fill the pockets of crony capitalism. See, with, with Republicans, you have crony capital capitalism. I mean, with conservatives. You know, I mean, even cor moderate to conservative Democrats. It's crony capitalism. Uh, to, uh, to a liberal, it's uh, democratic, what's the term? Democratic socialism? Uh, for is. what? I lost track of uh, social. Where are you going? Well, the the the, the thing is. Uh, the thing is, I'm the talking, poor I, don't I, have enough money. I'm talking about if a politician is all uh, enthusiastic about charging a high tariff on American companies that outsource. Okay, all that added revenue that is being collected, what good is it if it's going to all go into the richest pockets and, and, to, and to military contract, uh, military it's, Well, spending? it's not. It, in fact, that's what will happen. If, he, if, if someone gets their <coughs> way and gets a 35% tariff for the stuff coming back in, then they will cut taxes on the rich in another area. Right. 
cut yeah. taxes on the rich. Of course. They, 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 what do you think they're going to cut the, the, the middle class? Yeah, one and a half a tax cut on the, uh, the Republican debate uh, of giving two thousand dollars to the middle class. Big deal. Oh, what they do? Oh, like like rebates? Yeah. Big sh big damn deal. Like they already got the, the earned income credit. If you got kids, you know you get uh, so much for each kid. If you make back, what was that again? If you make less than forty thousand a year collectively. Oh, if you make 40, so one of them wants to uh, no pay t taxes at all. Yeah. For someone like that, yeah. Well, yeah, Trump's one of them. I don't know what they... they there's there's know, a I couple mean, all, of them. All of them, the tax plans that they all have, there is, there, there, there's something wrong with every one of them. Okay? That's what my, my point. Yeah, and one of the uh, uh, um, CNBC uh, journalists uh, said they... they they had uh, top of the line, um, I don't know, economists and or whatever, take a look at the tax plan, and, and the numbers are not adding up. Of course not. You know, it's uh, uh, you you have to the progressive tax system <clears throat> by taxing the people that make the most money is the only tax system that would work. You know, and all the tax breaks should be for the middle class. Because they make less money. Uh, well, I'm sorry, that's not what they do. It's not every time they give a tax break to the rich, they give a little one to the middle class. <coughs> so the middle class keeps their freaking mouth shut. Well, I got something too. I mean, just to pacify them. That's correct. And these are the same idiots that re-elected uh, Scott Garrett and Chris Christie. You know, we're talking about non-rich people that vote Republican. Mm -hmm. Non-rich. Uh -huh. whether, whether you're poor, extremely poor, uh, middle class, up, uh, lower middle class or whatever, you <clears throat> are getting nothing positive by voting for a Republican you will get nothing positive. Many Democrats consider Ryan someone they can work with. Oh, really? As but, they did two years ago in crafting a budget compromise. But if he tries to work with them and compromise, the majority will get on his back and, and threat to, to kick him out. That's what happened with Boehner. Yeah. But they don't hesitate to assail him as a symbol of Republican policies they consider harsh. See, these Democrats are like the the, the old hipster, the old hipster uh, ultra liberal. Why can't we all love each other? And uh, I, uh, Barney the dinosaur, there. I love you. You love me. Uh, sing kumbaya and all this bullshit. They should stop with their stupid, wussy, wimp, wet dream of being friends with the Republicans and compromising with them. Including efforts to reshape Medicare into a voucher-like program. I hope he will stand up to the extreme voices in his caucus, said House Minority Leader Harry Reid. In other words, they want to get rid of it. Well, what the hell is Harry Reid, a House Minority Leader? He's in the Senate. Yeah. Well, what the hell are they saying here? House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi received 184 votes for Speaker. 